it is on ESPN. I'm assuming because you know the the Olympics has been postponed. I think until next year. I think they actually uh, stipulated finally the IOC finally got back to the athletes and confirmed that they were going to postpone until next year. Um, there was a little bit of hoopla around what date was going to be. I'm sure loads of sponsors were involved getting it here, trying to make sure it kind of goes through. But finally. Um, a little bit of common sense prevailed and they're going to uh, just postpone it not cancel it outright and it should be okay but I'm assuming if you're an athlete and you've been training for the best part of what four years for this to come around for it to be cancelled and probably be a bit of a bummer but it's an article from ESPN it's titled um, Complete, um, Complicated Path Back to Normalcy, Normalcy uh, for 11,000 Olympic hopefuls so here it goes it says um, close your eyes and you can picture it quite easily even amid the chaos of this unimaginable time Dark under a dark midsummer night, sixty-eight thousand people from all corners of the globe standing in unison Japan's national stadium. Eleven thousand elite athletes marching on the track below, collared behind their national flag, smiling and waving to a worldwide television audience. And at the centre of it all, standing beneath an Olympic flame, International Olympic Committee President Thomas Bach. Da, 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 so caught in it. So this, of course, is the Olympic dream. The belief that the wake of Tuesday's news, the Summer Olympics will be postponed a year. Their return will reunite the world. After of COVID, which is very true. I think we saw that a lot when the Olymp London Olympics. I think there's a lot of there's a lot of doom and gloom around it. The funding, um, the amount being spent on it, the fact that it was going to uh, gentrify an area in London that hasn't necessarily been touched yet. There was a lot of negativity around London Olympics, and once that opening ceremony happened, everyone sort of was blown away, and it kind of um, that sort of good feeling, that sort of good sentiment did carry through for a good six months after after the Olympics were finished. So I wouldn't surprise me if they do postpone it to next year especially with everything that's going on especially with you know they do a good job of really highlighting the stories of some of the athletes especially from lesser known nations um sort of giving the platform to tell their story especially you know god forbid but let's say they lean into somebody who lost a family member due to the co due to covid19 it could really um mark a uh it could really be a good way to sort of not fight back but to sort of represent the collective um you know, experience that everyone suffered from around the world and sort of bringing it together and a big whole two plus celebration. So it definitely wouldn't surprise me if that was the case. It continues here. Uh, but the path uh, from here to there is comp it's a complicated one. But for the Olympics, a year is a far more difficult task than pausing the NBA season or rescheduling the 2020 soccer championships. It's figuring out equitable solutions for 11,000 athletes from 206 different countries. It's recognizing 200,000 volunteers. It's assuring the safety, enjoyment, and entertainment of 4.5 million ticket holders. Few would uh, argue, choose the city there, but um, ensure there are far more greater global concerns right now than the to Olympic athletes to compete. But in Olympic circles, as much as uh, Tudor's news brought clar uh, clarity for athletes wrestling with whether to train or to stay at home. It also brought an encyclopedia worth of questions, the majority of which, at least for now, come with the answer TBD to be determined. So it says that for me. Um, it almost feels like a wasted year, like it didn't even happen, which is very true. I think that's why I'm really annoyed by the whole Dana White UFC thing. Um, they're still trying to go forward. They're still trying to work out a plan for UFC 249, which was meant to be headlined with Khabib and Tony Ferguson, the fight everyone wanted to see. Now, because that fight isn't happening, Dana now is trying to substitute um, Khabib because he can't leave Russia with somebody else. But, you know, we wanted to see the Khabib be Tony fight. If that can't happen, just pause the fight or postpone it for another day. But he doesn't want to. So I'd assume, um, in the same way the fighters are on edge, right? Khabib had a whole training camp to prepare for this fight, was, of course, to show up and. and um, was was on course to kind of show up to the fight, no injuries that we kind of are aware of, um, to kind of put his body and his mind through that grueling um, affair for it to be cancelled for reasons outside of his own control, is uh, you know is painful, but also to have this you know present that's kind of uh, doing his best to go against any kind of medical advice and still pursuing putting on the fight, so you're in this constant loop you're caught in limbo basically right you're kind of like in a fight of purgatory you're not close you know you're not close to being counted you're close to being oh you're stuck in the middle what are you doing are you still cutting weight are you still trying to run five miles a day like it's just a ridiculous state of affairs so this guy really pointed it out um who this guy two-time world wrestling champion uh jordan burrows and he said uh, there's just so much up in the air now showed um shot to the back burner 
um, six time six oh, sorry seventy six Americans uh, already qualified for Tokyo twenty twenty before Tuesday's announcement during a conference last week with U S Olympic athletes. Burroughs said an athlete asked if those qualifications would hold for 2020, 2020, 2021. Very true. Very good question. While the United States Olympic Committee and Paralympic Committee leaders said they'd likely would, the decision is far from uh, final, which is ridiculous, really. I mean, they should just carry it over. And he said, then imagine being an Olympian a whole year in advance, said Burroughs. Why the, what does that do to your willpower and your fire and willingness to train? And for everyone else, what are, what are, when are trials? How do you qualify? Uh, there are so many uncertainties. Uh, but it's not anyone's fault, which is very true. And I think I've I felt that in a little regard. I think I remember that was part of the reason why I decided to book races ahead of time because I found that when I was just running just after work or before work on the way from home, there would be a point in time where I'll just hit a bit of a wall and I won't necessarily know how to kind of get over it. And I will try to, and the, and the recurring kind of question in my head will be like, what's the point? What are you doing? It's why, 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 why? Um, and it can be hard then the next day to get up and have the motivation to go and train because you're not necessarily training for anything. You're just going to train for the sake of it, which probably was the reason why a lot of the, thinking of it now, speaking of lines, probably why a lot of people are into doing martial arts or those kind of things because there is a level of progression. There is a clear way to kind of get better. It's kind of demonstrable. You know you're getting better the more you're going. Um, that could also be why people do those kind of things. But you know, if you don't have a race booked in, you have something in the schedule, it can be difficult to keep the motivation. So imagine if you're an Olympic athlete and suddenly they take away the ability for you to compete this year and then they have all these questions left in the air for next year, you can't really justify in your head, you know, logically or rationally that you shouldn't have that, that donut or that you shouldn't stay out tonight or that you shouldn't drink. It's not going to happen, is it? Because, you know, there's only so much willpower. Willpower is fine, they say, right? You need to have, there needs to be more that's driving your way of doing things and willpower you can't rely on it because you know you can have a bad day and suddenly willpower's going out the window and i thought that was quite interesting you know the fact that you know it's impacting people in different sort of ways the i think that's going to be part of the way it's, we're going to be measured in the history books is how we handle the things that happen after the fact i think we can't really help anything that's happened in the past that's already done um is where we kind of support the people who are most at need um as you know time progresses as things get a little bit better how we handle that is really going to be how we define the history books, I think. And so far, it's not looking good, but you know, who knows? It could improve over the next few um, days and weeks.